Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been quite a while since my last devlog, but I've just been too busy to focus on YouTube recently, so my apologies. But the past two weeks, I decided to take on the incredibly exciting task of learning Vulkan. Vulkan is a graphics API, much like OpenGL. However, it's much more modern, allows for greater control over performance, and is cross-platform. So it seemed like a fantastic resource to know. The only issue is, it's very verbose, and quite difficult to get even a triangle rendering. So of course, I decided to try rendering an entire galaxy. Before we even think about writing any rendering code, we have to do a lot of setup for Vulkan. Once we've initialized a window and platform context with your context creation library of choice, we need to create a Vulkan instance which is essentially just a structure for specifying which extensions and validation layers we want to include. Extensions, as you may have guessed, add additional functionality to Vulkan. Validation layers are the Vulkan equivalent of a debugger. They provide detailed error messages, which make debugging much easier, and can also be fully disabled for increased performance. Once we've created our instance, we need to tell Vulkan which physical graphics card to use. My laptop, for example, has both a discrete graphics card and an integrated chip, and Vulkan doesn't have the capacity to determine which is better. So we have to enumerate over each available device and pick the best one ourselves using a few different metrics. Then we take our physical device and wrap it into what's called a logical device. Then we create a swap chain, allocate a command pool, and a few other things. I won't bore you with all the details, but I've left a few resources in the description if you want to learn more. But for all that work, we finally have a blank window. But now we can finally start writing some rendering code. We start by creating a render pass, which is a structure specifying the required resources for rendering, such as the depth and color buffers, as well as their dependencies. Then to facilitate the main render loop, we create the frame buffers, command buffers, and various synchronization objects. Now, it's finally time for the bread and butter of Vulkan rendering, the pipeline. OpenGL has no real analog to a pipeline. In OpenGL, the pipeline is formed by setting a bunch of global state with functions such as GL enable. In Vulkan, we specify all of those parameters upfront and create one neat pipeline struct that we can bind all at once. Creating a pipeline is pretty involved, requiring multiple steps. We must specify the shaders, vertex input attributes, descriptors, blend state, push constants, and much, much more. But once all that's done, we can use those synchronization objects we created earlier to finally write a render loop. And we finally have our first triangle. And it only took us 3,000 lines of code. Wow. But from here, all of the standard graphics techniques apply. We can introduce a view and projection matrix to place a quad in 3D space. Then, with a bit of shader magic and clever transforms, we have an infinite 3D grid. The actual galaxy is going to be rendered with a large number of particles. So we'll start by creating a compute shader to generate all of the particles' positions. Creating a compute pipeline in Vulkan is thankfully fairly simple and doesn't require much information. So it's not long before we have a bunch of particles on screen. To shape these particles into a spiral galaxy, I'll be referring to this great article. The main idea is that you can generate a spiral shape by simply placing particles on concentric ellipses, where the ellipses rotate slightly as their size increases. Doing just that, we indeed start to see the spiral shape emerge. We can then randomize the particle placement to get a more natural look. And it turns out that moving the particles along their ellipses creates a very realistic looking orbit, so our galaxy is animated quite easily. Then, we give the stars some color and add some larger, translucent dust clouds to simulate the large masses of stars in the galaxy which cannot be detected individually. The 
final touch is to add some of these red dots, known as H2 regions, along the arms of the galaxy for a bit more detail. And with that, our galaxy is complete. Despite its verbosity, Vulkan is a well-designed API in my opinion. All of my future projects will likely use it instead of OpenGL, since I can benefit from the increased control. Expect some very interesting projects soon. I've been itching to work on something more technical. The source code for this project is linked in the description if anyone wants to check it out.